Hello everybody, my name is Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics, and we're going to be continuing a series on Bluetooth Low Energy. Today we're going to talk about the Attribute Protocol, and this is a protocol to discover, read and write attributes on a pure device. Now it has six basic operations. A request is sent to a server by a client and this invokes a response. A response can be sent to a client in response to a request to a server. A command is sent to a server by a client. Indication unsolicited PDUs are sent to a client by a server and this invokes confirmations. Confirmation PDUs are sent to an attribute server to confirm receipt of an indication by a client. Notification unsolicited PDUs are sent to a client by a server. The attribute protocol has a default maximum transmission unit or MTU of 23 bytes. When we explained the constraints of the oscillator on the physical layer, the maximum number of bytes was 47 bytes. Now we have to remove overhead due to preamble, data access addresses, header, length, and CRC. 37 bytes are left over for the payload. During advertising in the payload, six bytes are mandatory for the advertising device addresses. For simplification and hence power savings, it was decided to have the same useful payload in the advertising and data packet that is 37 minus 6, so 31 bytes. But during encryption, 4 bytes are necessary for an MIC, and this leaves our 27 bytes. As the L2 cap layer has an overhead of 4 bytes, 23 bytes are left for an attribute protocol. On version 4.2, the MTU is much larger as the PDU of a link layer packet may be up to 257 bytes versus 39 bytes for the version 4.1. By default, the MTU is 23 bytes and must be supported by all devices and all the versions. But if a higher MTU is desired, it must be negotiated between all of the devices and the lowest supported value must be used. It is important to know the MTU because it impacts the commands that must be used. For instance, let's assume a value of an attribute is 30 bytes long. It is longer than the default MTU of 23 bytes. To get the data, a read request with an attribute handle as a parameter is performed to get the first 22 bytes. And then a second command called a read blob for binary long object request is performed. This last command has a parameter, the handle of the attribute, and the offset to get the data. With the offset of 22, the last eight bytes of the attribute are sent. Due to the overhead of all of the packets, this procedure is less energy efficient than having only one read request and the negotiated MTU was long enough to get the 30 bytes in one packet. Obviously, a similar constraint is present when writing a long attribute. A prepare write request allows the creation of a queue and then an execute write request in order to have an automatic operation when writing an attribute value. Indeed, it would be a very bad idea to update the value of an attribute in several steps, as it would contain wrong values for some time that could be read by the application. The attribute protocol defines a series of functions like reading by type request, make multiple requests, read by handle value. Read and write are initiated by the client, but notification and indication are initiated by the server. The attribute protocol finally defines the errors that are detected if the previous commands are not successful, such as a request not supported, invalid offset, queue is full, write not permitted, and so on. Thanks to all these operations, the GATT, or the General Attribute Protocol, can perform its tasks. 